G'day everyone. Hi, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab and here I am in one of my labs with a new series called What's in the Box? And I get a lot of products sent to me to, to review, to, to install, for my students to be trained on, um, to give feedback on the design of the system and specifically for Australian standards. So anyway, this is a, a new unit that's arrived here at the lab. It's from a company called SoFar Solar. Um, I get a lot of grid tie inverters sent here and they're pretty generic generally. Often it's the same specs over and over again. Five kilowatts, dual MPPT, Wi-Fi monitoring. It's pretty much the basic design of your standard sing single phase uh, grid connect type inverter. But this is a bit different. This one's 7.5 kilowatts single phase. Uh, it comes in smaller models as well, but what I like about this is these days it's all about how much solar can you get on the roof. You want to get the maximum benefit um, of the renewable energy that's falling on your home, uh, that, your, that your home can generate, and uh, with a 7.5 kilowatt allowing for um, the limits put on maximum PV size uh, at the moment, which means you could put 133% more than that. Though the manufacturer recommends a maximum of 9.98 kilowatts of PV. So basically, let's call it 10 kilowatts of PV, a 7.5 kilowatt inverter. Wow. Now, enough about the specs. Let's have a look at the unit. So here the unit is. Um, as you would expect, uh, user manual, documentation, uh, inspection report, that's great. The mounting bracket. Uh, these days they're very simple because inverters have become very efficient and very light. So it, it's a great little uh, mounting bracket with plenty of options for where you can attach it to the wall. Um, I like the, the, the variability of where you can put the screws through, but also the fact that, I've got upside down I think, uh, it's got a security uh, hole where you can put a padlock through there to secure it from theft. Uh, CT monitoring, so if you've got export limiting, you're going to need to have some way of measuring the energy exchange uh, at the point of connection with the grid. So this is a pretty popular way of doing it uh, with a CT and um, that just clips around the main conductor uh, coming into the installation. So it's a, there we go, it's a split core transformer basically uh, that connects to your um, incoming mains and there is a, a little plug as well uh, for that unit to make it easy to connect. Uh, so I call these lolly bags. Uh, it's all of the plugs and sockets, screws, etc., that you would need to complete the installation. Uh, so these are um, your, your standard sort of MC4 type connectors uh, with male and female pins, uh, wall plugs, screws, and spare connectors for uh, inputs. Now let's have a look. I actually haven't really done this one before, so let's have a look what's in the box. And here it is. Well, not too bad. In fact, I might get the box out of the way. As you can see. Wow. Okay, so we've got three inputs. There's a PV1, uh, which has uh, one MPPT with two sets of inputs, and PV2. Um, the reason for this is because the um, the MPPTs on these are not symmetrical. It means one is your primary and one is your secondary. One can take a much higher current maximum uh, than the other. Now, I'll just better check the data sheets on this because I did look it up. So, MPPT um, A or one can take 22 amps and MPPT two can take 11 amps. Now, something that's important to note, particularly with Australian standards, is that you have to consider the maximum short circuit current rating of the input with respect to the short circuit current of the PV array. So these days panels are getting very high current ratings, uh, often over 10 amps for a single module, especially the larger um, wattage modules. And we have to allow a 1.25 times uh, factor for short circuit current ratings for the protection of cable and uh, PCE connected to it. So you need to know what the short circuit current rating of these is. This is an important differentiation. An MPPT current rating is the point at which the inverter will stop uh, drawing more current from the array. Remember, an inverter is basically a smart load. It can choose how much current it's going to draw uh, from, from, the, um, 
from the PV panel. So the panels don't push power into the inverter, the inverter draws the current it requires to generate the power it needs. So it can draw 22 amps on MPPT1 and 11 amps on MPPT2. But if there was a fault with the unit for any reason, which is you know unlikely, but if there was a fault, it can withstand a short circuit current rating higher than that. And that's 13.2 uh, amps on MPPT2 and 26.4 amps on MPPT1. Why is that important? Well, with our larger power modules, larger current output, multiplying by 1.25, we're often up around the 12 to 13 amp short circuit rating with that 1.25 multiplying factor. So you could say that this inverter really is built for our high powered modules, high current output modules, and meeting the Australian standard requirements. Additionally, we've got uh, an a integrated DC isolator. Now this particular unit um, has uh, just a standard rotary switch as a DC isolator. I should point out that um, unless you have a compliant DC isolator with a, it's lockable in the off position, it meets um, the test requirements of IEC 60947-3, um, you would also need an external DC isolator in this case, because uh, this has got no locking mechanism on it. So it's not lockable in the off position, but it doesn't really matter. You just put an external DC isolator adjacent to it, as is pretty common. Uh, we've got a Wi-Fi module. Now, once again, I haven't actually opened this up, so let's have a look. Um, what have we got in here? I'm imagining this is the Wi-Fi module and I'm not disappointed. There we go. So that is the Wi-Fi module. Um, yeah, it's, it's got some LEDs on it, which is nice. Net, com and ready. So I guess it gives some indication of the status of this unit. Uh, and uh, it's got some mounting screws, so it's permanently affixed. It's not going to fall off uh, if someone bumps it. And it's got a nice little short, tough, very strong antenna with a, a reset button on the bottom. So uh, it connects in here, uh, and if I put this up so you can see, it connects in here, uh, and that gives you your monitoring and uh, configuration options. Other things to note is we've got um, connections for our AC here, uh, and we've also got some uh, inputs for small cables. Now I presume that is for your I really should read the manual sometimes, but I'm just doing it straight out of the box as we often do. Um, I imagine that's the connection point for the CT uh, into the unit uh, through those compression glands. So there you go. Um, having a look at the back of the unit, nice big heat sink as you would expect. Passively cooled. Uh, I can't see any fans, no vents, so that means no moving parts. So the reliability of something that has got no moving parts is generally really, really high. So, all in all, um, a very conventional looking uh, inverter, but with that extra power rating of 7.5 kilowatts, uh, that's pretty nice. I say this is a winner if you've got room for 10 kilowatts of solar on your roof. Anyway, thanks for watching.